Hello. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming along. Uh, I understand, of course, this is getting on towards the end of the summit now, so you're probably all a little tired, but uh, I appreciate you coming along. Um, my name is Jeremy Phillips, and my uh, better dressed colleague here is uh, Luca Cervini. Uh, we're from Pawsey Supercomputing to talk to you about uh, GPU on OpenStack for Science. Uh, now, before we start, uh, just please be aware that um, while we did mention in our um, presentation brief uh, that we would be um, talking about our results using RDMA, however, unfortunately, uh, the results for that are not available at this point. So on that caveat, as long as uh, uh, that's not a deal breaker for people, well, hopefully you'll be able to get something out of this. Uh, first off, just a little bit about ourselves. So, Posi Supercomputing, uh, we're based in Perth, Western Australia. Um, we are a non-incorporated joint venture between CSIRO, which is the uh, federal government research organisation, uh, and four of the West Australian universities, uh, Curtin, Edith Cowan, Murdoch and UWA. Um, we are also funded partly uh, federally through the INCRIS, the National uh, Research Infrastructure for Australia Fund, uh, as well as through the State Government of Western Australia. Um, originally established in June 2000, um, primarily started with uh, HPC and data storage and just in recent years have started moving into cloud computing. Uh, we provide free computing resources and training to students, industry personnel, researchers, academics and scientists. Primarily obviously based within Australia, but uh, we do have some other um, people coming from outside of Australia as well using our resources. Um, the, from the HPC side, we have two Cray supercomputers, an XC30 and an XC40. Um, we also have about 10 petabytes of uh, live storage and 40 petabytes of tapes. Quite a bit of that obviously is being used by the ASCAP, the Australian Square Kilometre Array Project, uh, Pathfinder, sorry. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so on top of that, of course, we've got our um, cloud computing cluster. Yep. <coughs> so hello, everybody. So. Uh, our cloud facility is called Nimbus, it's not mentioned here, but uh, it's an OpenStack uh, installation based on uh, OpenStack Pike and with some nodes already in, um, some, nodes, some services already in OpenStack Queens. I think we have Keystone and Cinder in Queens already. And we have 46 compute nodes, uh, 39 storage nodes and uh, 12 service nodes. And the new entry that are these six uh, GPU servers with dual um, NVIDIA uh, V100 GPU card. In total, we have around 3,000 cores and one petabyte of raw storage um, with Ceph. And uh, the old cluster uses Ubuntu 16 for the moment and use Puppet and Mass as uh, bare metal provisioning. So we are a small team of three people, me, Jeremy, and Gregory. So, so just thought we'd take you through um, uh, briefly, at least anyway, a couple of the um, projects that are currently using our uh, GPU nodes, just to give a bit of an idea of the um, kind of fields that are being covered. So obviously we've got uh, agriculture, processing of multispectral imagery from remote sensing. Um, that project is investigating land systems for water repellents in cereal production and revegetation in low rainfall farming systems. Uh, we've got psychology, using TensorFlow to speed up sampling of large and complex Bayesian models. They're testing cognitive psychological models using statistical software to extend mathematical models of self-regulation to complex tasks involving rapid decision making, uh, for example, air defense. Uh, in biology, uh, using molecular dynamics simulations to assess the interaction of glycans with their receptor proteins. Uh, that's NMR, spectroscopy and molecular modelling techniques are used um, to um, find more about the structure, function and dynamic of uh, carbohydrates and glycans that play a pivotal role in cell-to-cell -cell communications, cancer and human pathogen interactions. Uh, we also have one, uh, another interesting uh, use case uh, which have just done their own presentation rec recently uh, on classification of shallow water fish, uh, which is 
this one just here. So basically, um, they, uh, it's a deep learning uh, model for uh, real-time object detection and classification from underwater images. Um, they use these baited underwater um, stations um, to attract the fish in, and normally this they have uh, trained um, uh, uh, oceanographers who do the manual classification, so instead they've started training this uh, system instead. Um, at the moment they've got about an accuracy of over 90% on the validation data set. So that was run off of the, the GPUs, just to sort of give you a bit of a, an idea of that work, which is cool. Well, we think it's cool anyway. Anyway, uh, so you probably want to actually hear a bit more about the actual GPU nodes themselves. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> the GPU nodes are uh, um, HP servers, um, particularly are yeah, DL 380s, and there's a dual uh, uh, CPU in them, and there's a 6132 uh, Xeon server with 14 cores, 384 gigabyte of RAM, and the two Tesla cards. And we have also uh, the dual 100 gigabit um, Ethernet link. So just to mention, so these servers have uh, different affinity with each uh, CPU and GPU. So the first GPU has an affinity with CPU, the first CPU, and the second GPU uh, to the second CPU. So these two have, uh, in theory, so in theory, we are running uh, two GPU VMs in these uh, servers plus other VMs that are not, uh, that they don't have a GPU in it. So one of the VMs is running from the first uh, uh, CPU and the second one, the second GPU. So uh, to achieve so, as per the OpenStack documentation, uh, we uh, use the CPU isolations um, for the uh, CPUs uh, that we are, want to run uh, with Nova and with the GPUs. So essentially we enable IO MMU um, in Grub and uh, we use this parameter called uh, ISO CPUs to isolate the CPUs we want to use for Nova. So in Nova.conf we use uh, um, the vCPU pin set uh, parameter with the, uh, with the CPUs that we just mentioned above. And uh, we enable the filters uh, with the Noma topology filter for, um, uh, yeah, for having the scheduler, scheduling the correct uh, um, flavor to the instance. So we also have uh, hyperthreading disabled because following the advice of some colleagues from other centers for our workloads, uh, it is better to keep uh, hyperthreading disabled to maximize performance on certain kind of workloads. So, Jeremy. Yep. So, um, yeah, the other part of that obviously is the PCI pass through for the GPUs themselves. Um, the documentation that OpenStack provides um, is actually pretty good. Um, so, very basically, we just run an LSPCI so that we can identify the, uh, uh, the vendor and product IDs for the two GPU cards. Um, and then in Nova.conf, um, on the controller side, we create an alias, in this case we've called it V100, um, where we identify um, those particular cards. Of course, we have to use the PCI pass-through filter um, for the scheduler as well. And then on the compute side, uh, we set up a whitelist um, for that uh, vendor and product ID as well, so that the uh, physical compute node itself knows to pass that through. Um, then we create the uh, flavor itself. Um, we just keep it to seven cores for the flavor. Uh, as Luca mentioned, these GPU nodes, um, uh, we still use some of the resources for just running regular instances on them as well. So for the actual GPU specific flavors, um, that's usually sufficient. Uh, we give it 90 gig of RAM. Um, the, again, the, the, the RAM is allocated um, basically split between the two CPUs, so we have to use the Numa node adjacent RAM for each of those flavors, uh, and 40 gig of disk uh, for the root file system under Ceph. Uh, the, in, in the flavor configuration, we just have three particular properties that are set, which are the, as you can see there, uh, for aggregate instance extra specs, uh, which is actually another filter that I forgot mentioned, should be on there, but anyway. Um, so that set pinned equals true. 
um, CPU policy is set to dedicate it, and the PCI pass-through, we refer to that alias of V100 that we defined earlier in Nova.conf um, with just the one uh, allocated to the PCI pass-through. And then for the, uh, when we create the host aggregate, we just make sure that pinned equals true is set as a property for that host aggregate so it knows that the flavor can run within that host aggregate. <coughs> Uh, as a slight aside, if you wanted to fire up a, uh, an instance that used both GPUs at once, um, there's some additional documentation under for OpenStack for CPU topologies um, that sheds a little light on that. The main difference, as you can see with that OpenStack flavor create uh, statement, um, is you've got that PCI pass-through alias. Uh, we're still using the V100 alias, but now we're telling it to use two instead of one. And the other line is highlighted in red, which is the Numa nodes equals two. So note, of course, because we've given it um, uh, double the cores and double the RAM, that's so that it can pull the same amount of cores and RAM that would have for one instance from each um, side of the, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, compute node itself. Um, yeah. So. So I don't know. I don't know if, um, if you mentioned it, but um, so this would like to be an open discussion afterwards to uh, see and if you can comment with us our results. So going a bit more in details. Um, so as you can see, these are the the Numa Numa nodes um, of our compute node. So we allocated the first uh, the first. Um, uh, instance to the Numa node 0 and the second instance to the Numa node 3. Uh, we used uh, uh, just as much as memory as we could have used uh, in the same Numa node to uh, decrease latency and having the VM perform as better as possible as better as possible. And uh, the GPU affinity, so uh, down there you can see the GPU affinity and you can retrieve that with NVIDIA SMI topology. So the first GPU is, so GPU 0 is got an affinity with the first NUMA node only and the second GPU uh, with the third, with the second, yeah, with the third NUMA node. So you can see here an instance running uh, with a vCPU pinning and you can see that the CPU affinity is only on the cores, um, on the cores from 0 to 6. Um, if you have another instance running uh, without vCPU pinning, you would see uh, the little Y on the all, all the uh, cores. That means that the uh, instance uh, vis virtual CPUs can use any of the cores available on the hypervisor, but not in this case. So, um, in our test, we try to compare our virtual machine with the GPU pass through to a bare metal node. So uh, obviously the bare metal node have multiple CPU and GPUs available, so uh, the performance of the bare metal node had to be tuned down to be comparable to our um, instance flavor and GPU instance flavor. So um, as already mentioned, the VM is configured to use a single Numa node, and so we try to reproduce that on the bare metal node. That is, was exactly the same hypervisor we run the VM from, but uh, with a like directly provisioned bare metal. So to do so, we removed uh, uh, the GPUs from the PCI bus using that command there, and we removed, we switch off also all the cores available except the first uh, six on the first uh, Numa node. So the only difference uh, we couldn't. Uh, uh, remove was the fact that the local storage uh, was an SSD in the bare metal machine, and uh, with the virtual machine, we still had a 40 gig volume on Ceph, and we have quite an old uh, cluster, and so for sure the 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 40 gig volume of Ceph doesn't have the same IOPS as uh, the local storage on SSD. It's an old SSD anyway. Yeah. So the first uh, benchmark we run is uh, the high performance Limpack. Uh, Limpack is a well-known uh, software library for uh, used for a floating point benchmark. And uh, as you can see, the bare metal, uh, the bare metal is on an average 4% faster than the virtual machine with uh, around uh, 5,500 gigaflops uh, against 5,200 gigaflops. So uh, Limpack is very GPU intensive, but it's not ultra CPU intensive. So I'll show you later why I'm mentioning this. 
but so the result uh, for this slide this seems um, uh, good results, but in the other slides we had mixed uh, mixed level results. So this is a TensorFlow benchmark for I think everyone knows about TensorFlow, but TensorFlow is an open source. Um, um, software library for high performance uh, numerical computations. And uh, this uh, uh, particular benchmark uses the ResNet 50 image classification model, and we see that the bare metal machine is only 0.6% uh, faster than the VM. And it seems quite a good result, so you can see on the bottom the number of uh, runs, and uh, it's pretty, the performance are very similar to the, to the bare metal. So the last benchmark we run is uh, NumD. So we run this one only uh, six times because we actually finished to do these results. Uh, like I think it was the, the, the day before we we arrived to Berlin, and uh, <laughs> and um, the so essentially the bare metal node in this case uh, is way faster than the VM. And the difference uh, in this test is the CPU is much more utilized than the GPU. And uh, uh, this NumD test is essentially a parallel, parallel molecular dynamic code uh, for high performance simulation of uh, large uh, molecular dynamics. And uh, we've seen after many rounds that consistently the VM is slower than the bare metal node. We still don't understand, and actually we want to open uh, the open discussion with you. We still uh, think that probably there's some issues with our Nova configuration or vCPU pinning in which uh, the CPU is not used as well as we think. Um, because, yeah, the CPU, as soon as uh, the CPU uh, is uh, loaded, so it's very loaded, the performance decreases comparing to bare metal. So for the people that wants to stay, we would like to have a small of an open discussion for people that had, uh, that already have a GPU deployment or for even for people that don't have a GPU deployment and would like to, to have some. And uh, these results for the moment are good for us, but just because of us, we have a small cluster, but recently we had a new capital refresh, so we have to uh, expand our cluster and an 11% difference in performance is not acceptable, and so we would like to tune our um, um, configuration to uh, have better results. So, if you have some comments already, I, I'm able to take some some questions or discussion. So, these are already the the known issues. That uh, so each of the NICs, obviously, for how the PCI razors inside the machines are configured, have a different affinity with a different CPU. And uh, though they are coupled, uh, they are bonded uh, with LACP. And so um, the two configuration creates issues with the virtual CPU pinning that we did before. And uh, so this TV, the, the instances cannot access directly both of the NICs. They have to pass through the other NUMA node and the other CPU. And so this increases latency and, and slow down performance. Though we don't think is this the reasons for the uh, NumD uh, uh, results, there are possible solutions for this, and uh, this is already some some um, uh, work that uh, other centers for other um, computing center already trying to address, and uh, some guys already tried to uh, pin half of the CPUs for the CPU 1, NUMA node 0, and half of the CPUs for the CPU 2, NUMA node 3, to have both the GPUs and network uh, be able to be accessed by the, the, the correct NUMA uh, memory. Um, but also, we could also think about removing LACP and just have another network configuration, but as you know, the network guys will not very ha be happy, very happy to change all the network configuration at the center because we want to perform a bit better. Um, and as a going ahead and wish list, uh, we really would like to test the NVIDIA grid and the uh, vGPUs uh, for Ubuntu, hopefully. Um, the packages and the binaries already are available for Red Hat and Libvirt, but they're not still available for Ubuntu. Um, 
I asked actually before the uh, Ubuntu guys uh, if uh, there was any news about it, and they didn't know anything. They told me that the kernel already supports uh, the VGPUs from 4.10 or 4.12, uh, but uh, with no binaries, I don't know if this is going to be possible. And once that is done, we really would like to try the VGPU support uh, on Queens and Rocky. And um, after that, uh, we want to do testing on RDMA um, on uh, GPU to GPU through, through the network. So if you want, do you want to add anything, Jeremy? No, that's pretty much it. Um, cool. So well, that's pretty much it for our presentation. But um, did anyone have any uh, questions? Yes. Use the mic. Yep. Yeah. Um, my question is: um, when you look at purely the performance of GPU on um, bare metal versus in a virtual machine, uh, I saw the benchmarks that, uh, that you presented were always uh, CPU and GPU combined. Is that correct? Yeah. Or except, it... except for TensorFlow is mostly GPU. Right. So did you see a difference there as well? You no, know, uh, actually, when, when it's only uh, GPU uh, bound, purely GPU bound, there's a minimal difference. This is uh, even less than zero, like around zero point uh, percent. Okay, so it's mainly the CPU. That yeah, was it's the mainly machine. the CPU. Yeah, but we're still not sure if it's uh, if it's because the CPU uh, with the NUMA node configuration, with the vCPU pinning configuration, and the NUMA how the uh, GPU and CPU are uh, are. Uh, joined together, uh, we don't know if it's for that the, the performance decrease, because 11 percent is, is quite a substantial uh, difference. We don't have this difference on uh, our uh, CPU uh, running without the GPU. Thanks. So, no so I'm kind of looking around the room for, I'm hoping that there's somebody here who knows this stuff way better than I do, but um, I, I don't know whether you kind of glossed over it or whether it's actually absent, but there were a few uh, <coughs> pinning configuration options. Mm -hmm. That I noticed that uh, a conspicuous yeah. what, absence of. What are you talking? Your config, like, um, and again, I don't know them off the top of my head so well, but um, there's like, um, uh, uh, shoot, it, it, it is a way to, to specifically affine the CPUs and memories in the same uh, NUMA. Group, yeah, that right? one <coughs> was. Um, I already. Oh, right. ah. So, um, so this is so you see that one is the first uh, NUMA node, node zero, yeah. and the NUMA node has the first six cores so from zero to six right. or so seven cores, and the memory adjacent memory. Right, I get it. So, but, but the yeah, thing, but he, sorry, yeah, sorry. Here, uh, I think is this what you were talking about. So, uh, yeah. This is from zero. So this is the instance that is pinned to that first NUMA node. And uh, the, the cores are pinned, and they stay within the Duma node. So if you see where the Y is, it's a bit of an unreadable graph, but uh, Versha gives it to you this way. Uh, you can see that from core 0 to 6 is pinned. Uh, this, so that is the instance information, mm -hmm. and these are the cores, uh, where the core lies on the physical core. Yeah, so that, that's why I assumed that I had just, you know, you just hadn't shown whatever the configuration option, because looks, this looks like it's, it's working the way you want it to. Mm. Uh, in which case, my my hypothesis here is that you're um, you're fighting against the overhead from the uh, uh, you, you're not getting exclusive access to access to these CPUs when you're running virtual. Yeah, we, uh, we thought so as well, but so we have all passed through already. Uh, we the the hypervisor we did the test was completely empty. So we right, but you still any. had but you're still fighting against the, the yeah, compute yeah, process. That was actually my question is is limiting uh, limiting the overhead to not be on the VCPs. I tried to do it but it didn't actually work. So I don't know if that's something you've, you've looked into um, as far as overhead. Yeah, though I mean the overhead 11% uh, is it's a bit too high. I mean, it's not can cannot be considered as a, a overhead. I mean, if you were thinking the first test uh, around four uh, percent, uh, it could probably be, but eleven percent is uh, is not. So, and we uh, still don't understand where the the, the issue is coming from. For, from have you behind. have you used huge pages at all, or did you set that at all in your your? Uh, we still didn't. We had on the other cluster, but these are really early results that we uh, published. That we, we, we achieved uh, right before coming to the summit. Okay. Um, it can improve huge pages, but I don't think it's going to improve so much the, the performance. But okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So a couple of things, just 
brainstorming with my colleagues over here. Uh, if there was a way for you to, um, you should be able to pin uh, the hypervisor processes to CPUs that aren't these CPUs. Uh, is one thing that yeah. could, that could get if you, if you are in fact fighting with the hypervisor process. Oh, did you already do that? Yeah, we already did that. So <clears throat> um, the ISO CPU parameters. So essentially, when you put that um, that flag in the in the in uh, in Grub, means that from so all the CPUs listed okay. uh, are they don't have to be used by the operating system. So okay. they are completely isolated, and just Nova can use them. So right. Uh, it's not hypervisor noise as well. Did you shut down the compute process before you started your benchmarks? The Nova compute, no. No, we compute. didn't. You could do that uh, you, as long as you don't need to go deploy more VMs. No, you no, don't no, need yeah, to be yeah. running the compute that's, process. That's, that's a good idea. Actually, yeah. That's a good idea. Thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I don't think that actually works. I think with it actually isolates them like it's supposed mm -hmm. to. So I don't know if that's a kernel version or something. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any other question or anything you want to talk about about this topic? Uh, it would be great to to know. If not, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>